then on March 23, 2000, we got another video game, Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour. Welcome to Walt Disney World. And you thought the Disney Park attractions of today had way too long names. I was aware of this game when it came out, but I didn't play it at the time because, you know, we didn't own consoles and I guess the PC version was a little too expensive considering how interested I was, but it made sense to me to turn theme park attractions into race tracks because theme park attractions loop, you know, once someone unloads, then the next guest loads, and it made sense to just have a Mario Kart clone go through Disney World attractions. And boy howdy is this a Mario Kart clone. So yeah, never played it myself until working on this video where I am playing an emulation of the PlayStation version on my MacBook which is probably not the ideal gameplay experience, but what do you want from me? I'm not a gaming channel. At least not for games made after 1999. The central characters of this game are Jiminy Cricket and Chip and Dale in their Rescue Rangers garb. Well, Chip and Dale aren't nearly as scared of the mansion here as they are in a day at Disneyland, which I looked at for this video, but ultimately decided didn't add enough narrative to count as an adaptation. There is also other playable characters who are original to the game, but they're reminiscent of existing Disney characters. Look, it's not Gizmo Duck. Look, it's not Rare Bear. Look, it's not Magicka Dispel. But that's not important. What's important is driving through the Haunted Mansion at breakneck speed. And what's important is that this is the first video game we've played today to actually use the mansion music, although good luck hearing it over the sound of the engines. So I raced, and I was doing okay at the start until I ended up going the wrong way somehow, and then ended up somehow stuck behind the wrought iron mausoleum gate. I don't think that's supposed to be possible, but I found a way. Okay, yeah, I'm not good at this. At least not good at this on a keyboard. Screw the racing, I just want to do time trial mode because I just want to look at how they brought the mansion to this game. That's right, the mansion isn't designed for speeding past, it's meant for taking in. So you start outside, I like how the gates open during the countdown, you go in through the Florida Q canopy, into the foyer, and into the stretching room, which doesn't stretch while you're in it, but each lap it's a little more stretched, which is pretty clever. And they got all four paintings, even the ones that are behind you while you're racing through. That's attention to detail. Of course, you can skip the stretching room if you take the shortcut through the fireplace, which puts you right in the library. Then you go up the stairs in the direction of your choosing, but both paths reconnect in the candelabra hallway. Then you have to make a very sharp turn into the conservatory. Don't go down the endless hallway, you just can't. And then you can go around the occupant's coffin, there's bonuses around the other side, but it's faster to just go past it, past the clock, into the seance room where... Leota's ball is there, but the rendering doesn't really allow her to be there. At least not on this PlayStation emulator. Then, instead of the balcony overlooking the ballroom, the seance room leads directly into the floor of the ballroom, and you can drive through the dancers, but it doesn't hurt them or you in this game, so that's good. They're actually ghosts, you just go right through them. Then you loop around, go up the stairs to the balcony, where you can either shortcut over the balcony or take the long way around the hall. Then you drive up the stairs into the attic, where you can drive right through the Beating Heart Bride and crash out one of two windows until you land in the graveyard, where most of the characters are there, just, you know, rendered in very low-res sprites. And you make it into the Hitchhiking Ghost Mausoleum, where you hear a staticky soundbite of Paul Freeze telling you to beware. And you see the ghost, which looks straight out of a 1996 GeoCities fan page. You can even see the Hitchhiking Ghost mirrors, although they don't actually reflect anything. I guess that effect was harder to do on a PlayStation than it was on an NES. Then you can just barely make out Little Leota above you, and you're back in the woods, back at the start of the track. The graphics are what they are, but considering how fast you're supposed to zip past all this, it's amazing they put in as much detail as they did. Like, it's all here, proportioned a little differently, but still, I don't think they skipped a single detail that was at Florida's mansion at the time. All in all, not a bad use of the mansion. It fits the needs of a ride track layout pretty well. Also, love the vehicles. They actually turned the Doom Buggies into a Dune Buggy. Just no notes, perfect. Also, toward the end of the year, on December 7th, a Game Boy Color version of the game came out. My understanding is all the other ports of the game are pretty similar to each other, but of course the Game Boy Color is an entirely different console with far more limited capabilities, so how do you port a racing game to that? <laughs> Not particularly well, it looks like. I guess I recognize some mansion-y architecture, but come on, putting the ballroom before the library? What are you doing, Game Boy Port team? So hurry back, we would like your company. 